Hello everyone, welcome to Data World 2024. I'm Ashwini Lakshmi Nayanan, Product Expert AEM Guides. I also have my colleague Divrat Singh, uh, Product Expert AEM Guides. Uh, the session is about Mastering Adobe Experience Manager Guides Extension Framework, the next level customization in Adobe Experience Manager Guides. So, um, as part of this session, let's uh, discuss what does this extension framework can do to a CCMS to improve the productivity and experience. We are going to take AEM Guides as the platform and explore the possibilities, know the underlying architecture of this framework, uh, followed by a demo where we will understand through examples how things really work and we will share the implementation steps that one need to follow to start with their customization journey and conclude this session with takeaways and a Q&A session. So uh, in a typical system usage, especially in a CCMS, though we have all the uh, standard capabilities, um, the business or the users mm -hmm. often require uh, custom UI, like a tailored uh, UI uh, or buttons, uh, actions, or the way the information is um, displayed to align with their specific operations. So the extension framework that we are going to discuss about um, empowers users to create custom packages on top of AEM guides, extending both um, the user interface and its functionality, offering developers and uh, consultants an enhanced flexibility to modify the components within the uh, within the AEM UI. Right. So though, either, though the UI can vary for each CCMS, but uh, let's see how this can be done in the AEM guides for the authoring and the review interfaces. Right. So uh, I have opened the AEM guides uh, interface. So largely we see three sections. Um, the left panel where you see all the uh, standard panels, uh, the repository panel where you navigate uh, through the content, uh, the middle panel where you see the content, the actual content area, and the right panel where you see the content properties, file properties, right? So when we look at this uh, authoring interface, um, what are all the uh, customization possibilities here, right? So if we think of in that context, then probably we can think of adding a um, few more panels here. We can add a um, few more custom panels here in the left section or modify the existing panels action of uh, how this particular uh, existing panel can work. You can change or modify the action of the existing panels or uh, you can also integrate um, uh, think of integrating any external vendor utilities and uh, when on the right panel where you see all these file properties probably we can add more um, uh, custom metadata um, we can add custom metadata here and integrate it with the uh, uh, within the AEM system and if you look at the top bar probably we can add more uh, 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 we can add a section like a help section or about section that will help the authors um, and in the toolbar probably we can uh, change the uh, change any existing tools the way it behaves uh, or we can group any uh, existing set of uh, tools and add more uh, buttons here so these are some of the possibilities that uh, that already uh, that that we can think of when we look at this interface and in the especially in the authoring space probably we can think of um, uh, you know adding uh, a snippet automatically when you click a button uh, so when you click on any particular icon uh, probably it should insert a code snippet automatically in the designated space or uh, technically syntactically assigning uh, irrespective of where my cursor is probably it should um, paste the code snippet um, inside the content area and uh, probably we can think of other file options here we can change a few context menus here or uh, uh, update or modify the existing uh, menus behavior so these are all the uh, possibilities that that we can uh, think of when we look at the guides uh, uh, interface here so in any CCMS, we will also have the review uh, capability, right? So when we go to the review UI of the guides interface, so here we can see, um, uh, you know, the different comments that have been added for this uh, map that has come for review. So probably we can add more uh, fields 
for this uh, review section like adding more uh, comment box or adding the criticality of this uh, comment how critical this particular um, comment is uh, adding rational or probably we can give a button to uh, email a user so this so these are all the possibilities that we can think of when we look at the review ui basically in the am guides uh, interface so as i said uh, when it comes to authoring we can customize the left and the right panels and the toolbar like adding more uh, panels in the left area adding more information to the existing panels like integrating any um, external vendor utilities or the features inside the left panel adding uh, more custom uh, buttons or the in, uh, buttons or custom actions in the toolbar um, and for example you can group the, the commonly used or frequently used toolbars together in the toolbar section and in the review ui probably you can add more actions for the content which has come for review like adding more fields to the comment box to save the custom metadata and in general uh, when we when we saw the custom when we saw the context menus we can add or modify the behavior of the existing uh, context menus or add more options there in the file options um, or change the behavior of the existing buttons so these are all the extension possibilities that we can think of uh, generally in the CCMS and more specifically we saw how uh, things can be uh, uh, things can be done in the AEM guides interface as well so uh, speaking of the extension frameworks architecture right so this architecture is implemented based on the mvc architecture so where uh, each and every ui component that we see in the application uh, am guides others to this mvc design where the view is defined in the json format along with styling and css and it gets updated based on the uh, based on the model which has the attributes and uh, values stored in the backend uh, and a controller, which is a JS class, which controls the behavior of every component by uh, handling and uh, processing the events triggered from view and model. So, um, so let's uh, take an example, right? So, um, context menu. So, when we discussed about having a, a context menu, so something like this, right? So, when we right click or when we cl click on the a specific file the context menu probably we can think of having a reprocess asset so adding an option to reprocess the asset basically uh, for example if i if we have uploaded some files and there is some issue with a particular topic and we want to reprocess it um, on am assets as a cloud service we have a separate option called reprocess assets in the ui uh, so if i have to reprocess i may have to go to the ui to execute this um, but that's largely for um, cloud uh, setup so in non-cloud setup this doesn't uh, exist out of the box right so enabling this option can be really beneficial so what we have um, uh, what we can think of is enabling this reprocess asset so that one more option in the UI uh, is we'll have to add one more option in the uh, in the UI of the context menu and uh, in the controller we are calling them through the dam update as a workflow. So one more example is um, review UI uh, component. So uh, as I said, probably we can add. Um, um, you know uh, the criticality of the comment we can add more fields like uh, adding a criticality of the comment adding the uh, comment rational or we can also think of having a um, custom uh, button that would uh, trigger an email to the author so that you can initiate a conversation separately regarding the review of this uh, map that has been sent and um, one more one more uh, uh, possibility is uh, uh, you can have a icon which says um, if I'm both a reviewer and author, probably I can uh, switch between the author and the review uh, by clicking on this uh, button. So that would take me to the topic where this particular uh, topic has been in the authoring interface where it has been sent for review. So you can switch between the authoring and review uh, with this uh, of that particular topic by clicking on this button. So and you can also add new metadata in the comment box of the review UI. Right. So these are all some of the examples. So now let's see uh, how these can be done in AEM guides using this extension framework along with the implementation steps. So um, over to you, Dhruj. 
Thank you, Aswini, for sharing uh, your thoughts on how the out of the box features of component content management system can be extended to enhance the capabilities or the features for the users of the system. Aswini actually explained how the authoring and review UI of Adobe Experience Manager guides can be extended and different possibilities that allows the users to see better experience based on the use cases they have. Now, we will be taking those examples and do a demo first of the different areas and showing you those examples in uh, practical implementation and also show you how this can be achieved with an extension framework that Adobe Experience Manager guides provide. On the screen, you see we have taken uh, four different sections of uh, the user experience. The first one is a web editor. Uh, let's actually uh, jump into the system and see how a web editor looks like. And this is what Aswini was also showing that you can open a topic in a web editor. Now, when you do that, you have a left panel where you can access the content from the repository or you can access different areas or different capabilities around the content. Now, once you open the content, you get access to the content that you can modify using the toolbar at the top of the web editor. And in addition, if you see on the right side, you get access to the properties of the content, be it the element properties or the file properties, which include the metadata for the content that you have opened. Now, looking at this, if you take the first example, which is the repository view or the left panel. Now, in this case, what a user can do or what an extension can provide on top of the out of the box features is that let's say I have a map and we'll do it by an example. We will open a, a map and let's say I have an out of the box capability to download the map. Now, when I download this map, obviously this is a async operation or the operation happens in the backend to create a package for the user to download. Now, once this package is created, a user gets a notification in the inbox. So I, I switch the browser tab to go to the inbox notification. I have to go to a different screen and then download a map. Would it be better that if I provide this download capability or the access to inbox notification right in the left panel? So at the bottom of the left panel, you will see that there are my tasks. What we have done is we have extended the capabilities of the web editor and added this left panel to access the notifications directly here. Now the user can click on this and they can directly download the map package that they actually created. Now, this is one example, but if you look at how this can further be leveraged by our partners or vendors, what they can do is they can add one more panel on the left side to expose the capabilities that they provide, like, like the grammar tools, or uh, an example is Acrolinks. We have an out-of-the-box integration there. So all those vendors or partners can extend those capabilities by adding their own left panel. You can also think about extending this web editor interface you have a toolbar there when you open the content. You can add another button in the toolbar to make it easy for the author for any frequent operations they perform or any complex operation they perform. Let's say I have a topic open here. What I want to do is I want to add some keywords for this topic. Let's say I have already authored this content and I want to add some keyword like it has an act activation code, but I don't know where to add that or what is the structure for that. Notice that my cursor location is inside the task body. If I want to insert keywords, which is generally uh, contained in a prologue section of a topic, what I can do is in the toolbar, what you will notice is I have added one more custom button, which is called insert keywords or insert prologue. When I click on that, notice a prologue section is automatically in inserted in the intended location of the topic, no matter where your cursor location was. And you can provide a template for this complex element structure. A user can go in and add their keyword like activation code. Easy for the authors to add keywords and they don't have to worry about what the schema or what the structure of the elements is. In addition, what you would have also noticed is to make the toolbar compact and easy to know where to find those tools, we have also grouped some of those related elements together. It could be any kind of relation, logical or similar types of tools, etc. But you can group all of them together. So that's another ability that you can provide using an extension framework. Think about this, that when you are working uh, in a review UI, so the general comment 
section can look like this where you can add your uh, comments which is uh, a string or a text but then look at if i edit this particular comment i see some additional fields which are like comment type where depending on the user's input the user may decide that this particular comment type is critical or uh, the rationale to provide or to support the criticality of the comment right so like this is uh, from marketing right so they want to provide that and then they can do some attachment so two additional fields are provided and this is something which is business specific right nothing like uh, these are the only options but the guys extension framework can allow you to add your business specific fields in your review ui now another thing which is important it's not necessary that only a reviewer is coming to the review ui it could on also be an author to collaborate to provide their input or to update the content as the reviewers are providing comments so let's say i play a multiple i, I play multiple roles uh, in this organization and i can also log into the review ui as an author right what i can i i would actually want to do is i want to open this particular topic in the web editor so that if i want to make some changes i can do that directly but being in the review ui by default you don't know where this topic is i might have to log in into the web editor ui and then open the topic browse it but let's say within the web editor if you see on the toolbar here i have one additional button which comes from the extension framework right so as soon as it loads it also loads the topic you can modify this create a version send it back for review now coming to other capabilities like some general actions you want to add to the web editor for example uh, you have made some changes into your content and you want to update the metadata which essentially means reprocess the asset extract the metadata and make it searchable uh, this could mean that once your topic is updated let's say in this case i have the prolog section i added the keyword i want to reprocess this so that my keyword is extracted as metadata for search although you can save an asset it automatically reprocesses but if you want to explicitly process the asset you see an option called reprocess asset here it is inserted by the extension framework right so you reprocess it will send this request and just to see whether it has done it or not on the right side in the properties panel uh, this section last process date i have not refreshed it yet but once i refresh it you will see the updated date here which means that uh you can also access custom metadata fields in the right panel so this additionally is added by the extension framework and this would also mean if you have any custom attributes like product id batch id if you want to add those attributes you can do that now how to achieve all this so there is an extension framework that adobe experience manager guys provide and we have the documented steps on how to implement that so let's see uh what are those right so the implementation steps involves a developer to actually take the copy of or uh, create the code but to make it easy what we have done is we have given a bootstrap or uh, the base package that we just showed and you can use that base package to create your own customization on top the first step involves cloning the repository so that you have the base package and then identify what you want to customize and related to the files which are available in the base package so the base package has some pre built files that you can use to add your own customization and we have given the sample files for each section like the left panel the toolbar and the right, right panel now as aswini also mentioned it is all mvc framework it's easy to implement because your developers don't have to uh, worry about learning any proprietary language so it's all html css and javascript and obviously json as well and we'll see some examples basic knowledge common tools use it and then uh, we have also given the documentation where you can identify which file to modify we will see an example here so four steps clone the repository find the file that you want to implement uh, build the code and deploy and we will see this in action now let's go to our documentation page uh, i have also added a link to this uh, page uh, towards the the end of the uh, end of the slides where you can uh, scan the code and look at the documentation now this page has everything about guides extension framework the first part is to clone a repository so if you see the introduction section uh, we talk about how the installation happens if you go inside this there is a git repository you can use and the git repository corresponds to this and this is the base package general process to clone a repository 
once you clone the repository uh, i'll show you how it looks like so after you clone it the structure that you get is this so you have a source folder where all the sample files are provided and there is also a documentation around which file to use if you want to modify a particular section of your web editor or the user interface there is a dist folder which contains all the output files so when you build your source code the dist folder will have all those files and then there are library files node module so you don't have to worry about we have given a version that you can use to build your own code right and then this page has all the other details that you may want the json files and the dist uh, the dist folder etc i will go inside uh, one cloned repository so you see similar structure it has dist source node node modules good part is that let's say you have done the clone of the repository once what you can do is uh, you can go inside the docs directory so whatever documentation around the extension framework you have seen it is also embedded into the uh, the cloned repository so i'll go inside the docs folder and run the command line and i'll do that right away if you see this so on the left side you see that i am on the docs directory and if you run the node command to start this it is going to run the documentation on your local so once this is done it will launch a browser it has all the documentation that we were just looking at like installing how the package looks like uh, some examples if you want to extend the framework uh, let's say on customization what a simple customization looks like uh, if you want to look at the jui M mvc framework that aswini explained you can see and understand what it is here and then customizing the app uh, you understand what is a model view controller and all those things here right now what i am going to do is i am going to use this documentation and uh, i'll show you if you look at this i have a source folder as well for example if i want to add some context menu i will look at the file options now the context menu can be at a file level at a folder level or let's say at a collection level if you want to relate this to the guides uh, web editor view so you see on a folder there is a context menu and i can do some things there let's say create a data map topic etc all those things can be controlled through the extension framework similarly on a topic on or on a file i can also uh, have a different context menu so for all of those we have different files and all of those things are documented here right for example if you want to customize the context menu what are the different files available and what all it can do so you can look at this particular documentation here now uh, let's look at how you want to uh, build this application and deploy it so as i said the first part was cloning the repository and the second part is now we have to build this so uh this example can be referred but practically what i am going to do is i am going to show you how to really make a change and deploy so i am going to take a simple example uh the file options here right i'll open this in notepad which i think i should already have and if you look at the ui i am going to change the context menu of a file i see there is a reprocess asset let's say i want to make a simple change to add or change the label of this particular option so under file options i will see where is reprocess asset so the display name is this i am going to just change the label right changed save it the next step is to run the build so inside the source folder i will run the command line and this is where my command line is look at the right side i am on the source folder i have to run a simple command called npm run build when i do that it is going to create the updated set of files under the dist folder so you'll see it is just updated right now i have the build available i have to now deploy this to the server my server is available either through ftp or if you want to deploy it through code the only thing that we have to remember is uh that in this particular case we have a guides extension folder as a client library and we have to deploy all these files here now i am going to use a file transfer tool which is called winscp on the left side i have the local folder where my files are built 
I will simply drag and drop these files to the server, right? So on the right side, this is the path where my files were on the server. I'm doing this through FTP, but obviously it can be through the code deployment as well. Now, as soon as I have done that, remember I changed the label from reprocess asset to reprocess asset changed. I'll go into the system and reload just to see if my code changes have been reflected. So my page loads, and then I look at where my file is, right? So you will see the option label has changed. So simple steps, uh, but I have cloned the repository, made a change and deployed it. And all that is available in the documentation as well. If you look at this particular folder, so it tells you how to do the changes or what changes are available in the repository. Then you can make a change using uh, basic customization, right? So it tells you about all the steps that we just saw. We took a clone uh, of the repository, found the JavaScript where I want to make the change and then updated the, the file, ran a build and then deployed the code to the server to, to see the changes. Just to give you one more example, which is very useful sometimes, let's say you are working in an organization where a content manager has to decide what is useful for my authors and they want to give some handy links for the authors when they are working on the content. They will create some basic tutorials for them or they would know where is the official documentation available or where is the tutorial available. Now, all of the, those links are handy and also at times specific to an organization or specific to a team. Extension framework like this can also help in adding those help links into your authoring experience or any experience in the application that they want to modify. So if you notice on the top right, there is a help section, help and support. Now this has been added using guides extension framework. All of those links are standard links. So you can click on community where you can raise your queries as a user and it is directly leading you to the experience manager guides community where you can raise the questions. Similarly, you can also lead them to any tutorials or documentation. That could also be a custom link, right? So you, you might have some internal repository where you might have some training manuals or documentation. So extension framework can help in different ways. And we have seen some examples and we have seen how you can also implement those changes easily. Takeaways from this session. If you want to access the documentation, you can scan and see the first link which takes you to the experience leak uh, page that I started with where I cloned the repository and saw what the installation steps are. Second is the GitHub repository. If you want to directly clone the repository, uh, it's available directly as a link as well. Uh, adding a button into a toolbar as we did to add uh, insert keyword or insert prologue. And if you want to look at a complete end-to-end -end example, basic customization, you can see the fourth link here. And whatever examples we showcased, if you want to directly take those examples and deploy it to your server, you can simply clone this repository, build the code and deploy it. Uh, you can directly access, his, access it on the same repository, but we have created a branch for this. Uh, and this URL, URL directly takes you to that uh, particular Git repository. Uh, that's about it. Uh, the idea is uh, you have an out of the box feature available from a component content management system. And extension frameworks like these help you extend the capabilities, not only to provide additional features, but at times to customize or provide uh, favorable user experience for your organization based on your business processes. So that's it for today from Aswini and me in our session about the Adobe Experience Manager Guides extension framework. We are very excited to see which extensions and solutions you will use to expand EM Guides. Thank you very much for joining our session. We really appreciate you finding the time and hope that we were able to inspire you to develop new creative extensions for EM guides. So we also wish you a lot of fun at Adobe Data World 2024. See you soon.